Okay. How y'all doing? Is my mic... My, uh, my mic's doing the quiet thing. It must be it must be temperature related. It seems like every time it gets hot, like hotter, then we get the thing. Am I in the center? I think. I hold on. I gotta like click out. No, I am center. It's so. I have so many little things. <laughs> so many little things. I'm aware there's no sound. Uh. Resizing OBS things may have fucked everything up. Okay. Um. Right. I have so many, like, tiny things about my setup that's starting to irk me. I'm like, I, maybe I should just, like, get this fixed. But, like, I also don't know how. One is a microphone. I'm also, I don't even know what the problem is. The other is, uh, it's not really a problem. It's just a minor OCD annoyance. My camera... It appears that, like, the lens inside my webcam isn't aligned with, a, with, like, its outer casing. So, like, I'm looking straight at the monitor. Right? And I'm completely center in the camera. But it's not... Like, this is straight ahead of me. You can see my hand going to, like, the left of the camera. Because the camera's, like, off to the right. And I look at it, I'm like, it's really just... It's not in front of me. It's to my side, but it's in front of me. Like, the feed is, like, from my front, so I'm like... And it, it trips me up. Um... Clearly, I had nothing else to talk about that, <laughs> other than my setup. I think we just do it. I think we just go. I could still do this, technically, if I really wanted to, but... of a landmass shaped like a storm. This really... This would be just to do it at this point. It really doesn't matter in terms of reputation. How is my reputation? Because they did choose. Uh, it didn't seem to actually like change. I think it increased Huana, I assume, and Nakataka, but like, it didn't really change anything else. Tikawara. Oh yeah, this is like the super, the super tribe. Uh, but yeah, I think we just go. Palagina. Did she leave? I graduate to inform you that due to your recent hostile actions toward the Valiant Trading Company, I'm obligated to return to my superiors and give them a full accounting of our time together. I will not be returning. If you have any concerns or complaints about my service, please direct them to the du Duchess Sparento. She wasn't holding any... She was probably holding weapons. <laughs> she was probably holding some weapons. She definitely had gear. Everyone had gear, and they're just like, the gear is gone. Unfortunate. Palagina's farewell. Who was this? Oh yeah, this that I can't even do that anymore. I can't even try to do the transportation. That probably would have gotten me killed by God. Uh, all these missives, missives. I don't even really care what that's about. Well, I mean that's not surprising. I did piss off both both companies, and so the characters related to those companies left. Um, I'm glad there are. I feel like these these kinds of consequences. I don't know if I just like towed the line in the first game, but I feel like the consequences of characters being like, "Yo, that's not cool," and leaving. Um, I feel like it didn't really happen in the first game. You just kind of collected them, and they were just with you. Um, maybe you gotta piss them off. You could always tell them to leave. But I can't remember any, any like, situations where, like, you could do a certain thing and they'd be like, Whoa! Maybe they'd say they didn't like it, but then they'd, they'd still hang around. 
So it's cool that there's actual consequences. Even though you do end up losing people. Uh, we can at least explore up this way, but I think we're just going to go to Okaizo. Which reminds me, if we're going to if we're gonna go, it's a level scale. Um, Edwin's going to get completely fucked over, I think. She's like four levels lower than everyone, everyone else. What's her, uh, let's go summary. Yeah, she's level 16. I mean, she'll be 17 pretty quick, I guess. But... You're like, you're not late, I'm just a little early, so don't worry, I literally just started. Okay, unusual wind. I've also been like burping nonstop today. And it's like affecting my like ease of ease of breathing, because I'm like constantly regurgitating air bubbles. Okay, a distant roar reaches you from across the water, raising the hair on the back of your neck. Chetapek gapes. Gods alive, have yourself a look at that. Squinting slightly toward the sky, handsome Ilium smirks. Also thrust a finger in the air. It's a god's damn dragon! Oh, this could be this could be the one from from underneath the water shaper guild. A massive winged reptile sweeps over Sehuigan, throwing the deck into shadow and setting the sails to billow and snap. Look alive or look dead, lads and lasses. For all the sails, ready to the power for wedding. The dragon banks in the distance, cutting a line across the horizon. You can just make out the figure of a rider upon its back. Uh <laughs> could use a dragon mount myself. Uh Uh, I'm gonna say keep calm, but man your stations. All hands to stations. Your crew scrambles across the deck as the beast's approach slows. The dragon stops above Hosehu again, the wind for the wind from its wings buffeting you as his rider peers down imperiously. She dismounts, slipping from the dragon's back and into thin air. Watcher of Cadnua, if I might have a moment of your time. Oh, that's one of the wizards in the circle. I am Lengraf, and unless I'm mistaken, you're the Watcher of Cadnua. Pleasure to meet you. Likewise. The circle hears so much about the Watcher of Cadnua, I've long wondered if you live up to the legend. Yes, yes I do. Just see me right there. I seek a truant member of the Circle of Archmagi, Maura. She sent rather cryptic word that she'd found something of cataclysmic potential in the Black Isles. Something that could aid you in the fight against Aethys. Still don't know if I'm fighting against him. You've aided the Circle of Archmagi once before. We've found ourselves wondering if you might do so again. Who's Mora? A Juana wizard, and a member of the Circle of Archmagi. Is that Lengrath's martial ma mastery? I think it is. She specializes in magic involving tentacles. It's a niche field. Uh... If I can find the time, I'll look. No, I'm probably gonna look into it. I would like, I would like the options. But also, why don't you just solve? Why don't? You, why don't you ever solve these things? Perhaps we solve more than you think. Perhaps we simply don't advertise to the common kith how often Aora comes to the brink of destruction. All right. When do we start? As soon as you're able. Maura's drive is frightening, foolhardy, and her love of the dead fire uncompromising. If she's found some method of stopping Aeothus, we must make sure she doesn't destroy Aeora in an attempt to save her archipelago. I will await you in the Black Isles, a volcanic chain in the southeastern sea, due south of Tikawara. Don't tarry over long, Watcher. Alright, well... As Langreth steps from the railing, her dragon sweeps beneath her, catching her up. The great reptile's wings dig into the air, and it rapidly recedes toward the horizon, Langrath seated steadily on its back. 
Smiling silently, handsome alien watches the dragon vanish into the distance. Ready to chart a course when you are, Captain. I am going to double check right now if it is Lingraf's martial masteries. Like all of the, like all the, 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 the circle, I noticed yesterday during the circle of wizards, when they were all talking, they were all like, like a bunch of spells are named after them. Uh, yeah, we're, you, we're using her spell book. We are using her spell book, her specialized spell book. Um, because if you look at, if you look at the wizard spells, uh, there's Archimere right there. He's got the dazzling light spell. Uh, Minaletta, she was there in the conversation. Um, but they all have their own specialized spells that they've created. Kalakoth. Consulhout? I fucking... I literally have Consulhout. I literally have his skull. And I can summon him once a day to fight for me. Like... These wizards exist. Which is a pretty cool touch, I'm not gonna lie. You almost never, like, there'll be, like, wizards with, like, their name. Because it's like, I made this spell. And, uh. Let's go out again. I've definitely seen a few more. Langrass, yeah. Literally just matter. Ringgrims? Also, how it's. Right? Like. Kinda cool. Kalakoth, Meletta again. Mora, there you go, Mora's writhing tentacles. They did say she was, you know, specialized in tentacle magic. Meletta, Archimere. What else we got? Ringram. I think it's just like the fight. Oh, Nina Goth. Nina Goth. Nine Nika. Sitzel. What should you order for food? I resisted ordering food today. So, I don't know. I ended up having a really subpar meal. Because <laughs> I, like, I had it yesterday, but I ran out of the spices for it. So I was like, why does it... Okay, is it my D key or is it the game? Because there's so many times I'm, like, trying to move the camera to the right and it just won't fucking go. That was not my D key. That would suck. Uh, I don't know if I want to like randomly explore though. All right, I'm supposed to go down here. All right? Hold on. I am gonna do this quest though. Oh, it's a DLC. Wait, that's what's her face? The girl from the magic shop I just uh I just recruited. I'm pretty sure this is DLC. If it's DLC I would prefer that like, I don't know. I don't know if I should do it before. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do them all at all. <laughs> this is the thing. Cause like I kind of want to finish the game and move on, but I was enjoying it last night, so I don't know what to do. I just head to the Black Isles. It might be this island right here. I don't know. Usually it shows up on the map. Straight south of Tikawara. That's straight south of Tikawara. I don't know. I feel like I just want to beat the story. And if afterwards I'm like, maybe I want to like, do more. Then I can. Right now I'm just uncovering map because I'm undecided. 
What should I get for food? Um... Um... This game again? Uh... Order Indian food. I don't know if there's any good Indian food near you, but Indian food's good. And it's surprisingly cheap if you make your own rice. So that's always a plus. Uh, you're examining cargo in the hall when the sound of whispers and muted laughter draws you deeper into the darkness. You carefully round a stack of crates to find Ikkyo, Canel, and Ingram engaged in a round of Orlin's head. Well, Captain, we're putting down copper on Orlin's head if you're looking to join a round. What is Orlin's head? You carve an Orlin into the mast like so. Ingram grins, gesturing at a crudely rendered figure with comically large ears and a rabbit nose. Then you throw daggers at it. Each part is worth a different number of points on account of some being harder to hit than others. Nose, for example, is worth a lot of points. So it's a game where you carve an Orlin's head into a mast, and you throw- it's basically playing darts with daggers, but with an Orlin's face. Do they realize I'm an Orlin? Do they not realize I'm an Orlin? Maybe I would find this game offensive? Can I say this sarcastically? Maybe next time? I'm just... I'm gonna say maybe next time. I kinda wanted to tell him to like, stop it. But I'm not gonna be overly sensitive about it. The burning shows. Yeah, I think I- that's the channel for like the end of the game, I think. Fekia channel. Uh, methinks the Royal Deadfire is not happy with the outcome that has occurred. Uh... The only way to reach it is by way of the Ofekia channel. Uh-huh. So far, I got like a year ago. Uh, I mean, to be fair, yes, not wrong. Uh, kind of want to like uncover this like border and be like, is this really the only way in? Probably is. There's so much. There's so much still. Probably do need to trade for food and stuff. Maybe not food, but like water for sure. I'll get some Kuiki fruits though. Could just buy this cap of tea. Fuck it. Literally two weapons pay for this. I have so much money, technically. so fast. The crew is too big. Because uh, I'm not constantly looting more like water and stuff. I'm doing a lot of just sailing around. So I'm actually, I'm actually running low on supplies. <laughs> this is very unfortunate. Yeah, I think I think I just I just wanna go finish. I just wanna finish the main story. That's what I wanna do. Let's do a separate save though. Can I name the saves? I don't think I can. Doesn't seem like I can. Alright. Well, Royal Deadfire has got a concern. Clearly, they're here. 
There's plenty of ocean to sail and many lands to explore. But what lies ahead of you dwarfs them all. Should you choose to sail on, you suspect there will be no, no return. Not to the dead far you have come to, come to know. So here's what I'm thinking. If I did want to do DLCs and all, 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 like, more side stuff and explore some more and do, like, the super bosses, I feel like I'd want to do that after the main story, and if I really wanted, I could just redo the, the end of the game to, like, see the new end, the new ending, ending, endings, vignette endings that I would get for having done the extra side things. And I just, I just made a separate save, so let's just continue forward. Like, like okay. I can literally just load the save right before walking in. <clears throat> you set a course through the channel into uncharted, turbulent seas. Andres Mortar rages on the rise in a vast wall of roiling clouds and rain, punctuated by the silver flicker of lightning. The wind pushes against you as if to ward whatever lies beyond from Sahuigan's approach. Sahuigan leads the fleet, crashing through the turbulent waters like an axe through armor. God's alive, Beudel mutters, staring over the storm. Little Luca blinks at the blackening sky. New and old salt once who claimed the Mordor were the edge of the world. I called him a fool. Now, though, the nav navigator's head shakes sadly. Now I ain't so certain. Head bowed slightly. Eld Ingram smiles. Today is as good a day as any to learn what the gods have in store for us. Shit, Captain, one of the current hands cries. Hostile vessels inbound to forward port. With a shake of the head, Vito emits a grim chuckle. Suppose it'd be too much to ask to be let alone out here. The cross cannons of the Royal Dead Fire Company flutter and crack atop the masts of the approaching warships, each vessel bristling with heavy guns. The approaching fleet numbers at least as many ships as your own, and may maybe more. Beetle frowns against the wind, the fleet's turning captain sending the gun ports against the enemy. The hands look to you from their stations, eyes, Beetle's eyes hold you, the crew stands ready. What are you the captain's orders? Do I want samosas or Procora? I forget what Procora is, but samosas are usually pretty good. I tend to go for like tikka masala and like fish curry and stuff when I order Indian. That and there's this one, the one place I order from, they have this thing, thing called onion culture. It's one of the the non breads. God, it's it's so fucking good. I love it. Um, I order it every time. A little bit of onion and like mango powder on. It's, it's real good. Yeah, I forget what Pokora is. So, samosas, I guess. Uh, let's. Uh, it's battered stuff. I'd probably go with the samosas. I could just. I could just. Let's fight it out. Take us into that storm. I could just let them fight it out. I don't really feel like joining this fray. I don't give, like... <laughs> Does that make me the ultimate manipulator? I fucked over both companies to make them piss at the Huana, and then I have the Huana and the, and the, and the companies just fight each other, and I'm like, bye! Um... Cause you know, I kind of, I kind of regret my decision, and everyone sucks. They can, they can, they can, they can kill each other. We're going in the storm. Although we need the water shapers to get through. Fuck. I'm gonna try this, hope, and just hope we don't die. The deck presses against your feet as the hooligan comes about the thunder of cannon fire. Vying with the thunder continuously rolling from the mortar, your ship straightens the bow, pointed directly into the storm. You lurch forward as the deck pitches violently. You grab the aft rail to keep from going overboard. Beneath you, just below the surface of the water, swims some immense creature. It moves towards the battle, the water curling back like parted skin. On either side of the beast, to reveal a monstrosity not of flesh, but of slick Audra and gleaming metal. The surface of the water bulges and bursts, and with a roar like the crash of the surf, a dragon explodes in the water. Ooh! Familiar scaled form of Skyorealophus Sky sweeps low, wings outstretched just above the white tipped waves before spraying its briny breath over the metallic monster. 
the monstrosity turns on the sea dragon, and then slams into one another, tearing at each other with tooth and fang, as it pours off of the pair as they pound one another with their abilities at point blank. The Luluka gave sweet, merciful Andra. I was not expecting that. Mess that bastard up good, shouts Vinitsi. The head turns back pointy. Did you see that? We've got a god's damn dragon. Go now while I hold the attention of these beings. Uh, Skyrae Alephus' voice echoes among your thoughts. Our debts are cleared, watcher. I don't remember what the dragon's voice sounded like. Uh, Beto turns from the carnage. Captain, we might not get another chance. All hands look to you. All right, cut the chatter. All hands brace for the storm. All right, Captain. All hands to station to keep your eyes to your work. We're going in. Andra's mortar looms before and above you, dominating the whole of the world. Rain begins to fall. The storms of Andra's mortar encompass the visible horizon. Hurricane winds roar like an imprisoned beast, blowing with enough force to warp the very seas. Past the curtain of rain and above the swell of waves, you can just barely perceive the outline of colossal Adra pillars. Deep in concentration, the water shapers at the prow of your... Oh, they're on my ship, sweet. <clears throat> water shapers at the prow of your ship mirror a complex series of stances. Prayers to Ungati begin as whispers and rise into songs bellowed in a unified voice matching the intensity of the storm. The sea responds with hesitation, sending up the occasional splash of water in protest. You begin to wonder if your allies are equipped to stand against the relentless fury of Andra's mortar. And then the very storm yields to their will. Wave after wave rises and swells into an assumed shape, first a wall and then an, or an arc, forming a perfect curve that projects deeper into the storm. One of the water shapers sends up a call, the others make a finishing gesture in a single fluid motion, clapping their hands and extending their palms, solidifying their work. The tunnel remains intact. Your, al your, your allies send up a congratulatory cheer as your ship crosses under the canopy of the sea. They fall silent as a distant shape stands out on the horizon, and you pause to appreciate it in turn, a sight that no mortal has glimpsed in thousands of years, Lost Ukaizo. Ornate spires reach up from the island, hinting at the city within. Not all of Ukaizo has weathered the millennia with equal grace. Other structures jut and lean out of the surrounding shallows, making the waters around the island impassable by ship. Resolve to take a skiff the rest of the way. We're doing it. We're doing it. You believe in me? Alright, believe hard. I have yet to have a single fight with Edwin. So... Uh, I'm gonna get her killed constantly. It's a good thing she leveled. <laughs> uh, still. Don't need Streetwise anymore. Let's do some survival. Uh, I guess I could take the perplexing sap. All right, new power level unlocked. What was this? Oh, this is the stun. Uh, falls behind the enemy. Staggered. That that's never useful. Uh, Alright, that adds, that adds the AoE, but this is the one that, like, that was the one with that fighter where, like, every hit was literally, we were literally healing him with every hit, so, what was this? Unbreakable, the fighter refuses to be vanquished, one per encounter, to be knocked out, the fighter stands back up with a portion of their health restored and temporary bonuses to all defense and armor ratings. <laughs> For 30 seconds? I mean, that's good. I will take that. I'll take that next. Next level. Probably take that next level. Uh, so my spell book is giving me straight up martial power. It's got a cast time, but has no recovery. So strong fit quick. So. Spellcasting disabled for 30 seconds. So it's like it'll go buff, 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 buff. Sitzel's martial power. And then I'm really, really good to go for, for 30 seconds. Uh, 
So basically, I would do like Alacrity, um, Flame Shield, wherever the fuck it is. I forget what level. I'm gonna do that Flame Shield. Maybe I I do want to check out how strong the, this Lance is gonna end up, end up being. Uh, what's the other one that my that my book is giving me? I can summon a staff, and it pushes away. That one's not just ne not necessary for for Aloth. Uh, chaotic orb. Right, this jumps from targets. Random effect. Hence chaotic orb, which is kind of cool. Delayed fireball. I won't be doing that. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for the 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 AOE from caster things because those tend to be very good. This is raw damage, which is always nice. Uh, this is some someone a duplicate. Wall of Draining. Self plus one. Ooh. Ooh. It's, about, it's, it's like a full on spell spell. That's kind of neat. So, as long as we're standing in it, the beneficial duration is just like. I assume it. I don't. I assume it constantly goes every few seconds. Or if it's just once when you're. Like, if, we're, if you're standing in it over time. Wait, no. Standing in the wall will lose time from any other time. Oh, for each second drained, I get extra things. Uh, I mean, that's pretty cool. What's over here? This is some powers. You're going to give a fuck. Um. Yeah, there aren't any that are, like, really good for battle mages on this level. Except for, like, this one. Which is already in my book, so I don't need it. Uh, freezing pillage, lightning, just hacks. Death ring. Radi it's a radius from caster. Although I did take this one. Radius from caster. Because look how much damage it does in penetration. It's insane. damage to everyone nearby. Like, it's... I, maybe I'll just take the orb. Either the orb or the wall. Yeah, let's take the wall. I don't know, what do you think? Orb or wall? I'm taking one of those two. The wall, if the enemy is in the wall, it loses buff time and you get gain time to your buffs. Yes. I'm essentially draining the buffs away from enemies. So as enemies are losing their, their beneficial things, I gain that time instead. Could be really good. It could be real good. And we're especially at a level where like a lot of things, a lot of enemies do have at least one beneficial buff on them. So I just keep all of my buffs longer, especially since I buff several times. I assume it would count for all of them, because when I buff when I buff Aloth, he does like four instantly in a row, and then the other is random status effect orb that just <laughs> bounces around on four people. Just extending this to buff, extending all of my buffs is nice, because I do this one all the time. It's already pretty long, but you know, it could be longer. 
Uh, sometimes I'll put on Arcane Reflection. Uh, so that one doesn't have a, has, have a timer to it. What else do I do all the time? Where the hell's... Oh, there's Flame Shield. I do Flame Shield. I do... What else do I buff myself with? I think that's all I usually do. But then it would also count for... Uh, my fighter things. My fighter buffs. I have two or three that I pop in there, too. So it's either that or Chaos Orb. I'm kind of 50-50 on it. Because the Chaos Orb can be very useful. Because it's four, it's just like... here's It's like, these are all very devastating status effects. And yeah, it's random, but like, they're still all dead. It, like, it, it kind of doesn't matter which one they get. And it hits four people. The downside is it is just like a straight up casting spell. I guess they both are. Yeah, they're, they're both the same time wise. Which is good. The wall would be better for Fighter Wizard. I think it probably would too. Alright. Unless you say otherwise, I'm taking the wall. Okay, I'm taking the wall. All right, we have a rivet. Well, I'll take care of it. Yes. Wait, who's in front there? Even. That is not what I would want. The fuck? fight this thing? Seems like something I have to fight. Are these the guardians? I mean, they're guardians of a sense. Defender stance? There was another one there. Bring them down. Alright. Uh, who's all in there? Everyone's in there. Uh, there are so many things here, and I'm not familiar with any of them. Okay. Um, just which one are you? You're right there. Okay, Aeloth, go there. Shodi, go there. Why can you not? What the fuck? Okay. No prisoners. Okay. How may I help? Um. Alright, he's swift now. Let's get flame shield. Yes. Well, uh, I assume extremely high fortitude. I can only assume. Uh, we've engaged. High armor, as you might assume as well. I guess I'll try stealing his armor. Uh, it's first fortitude. It's only a 76? That's it? Really? Fine, whatever. Uh, nature's mark. I can make this smaller, which will make it better? I don't know. I don't know what that does in nature's mark specifically. Longer time? Better accuracy, maybe? I don't know. Okay, what do you do? <laughs> okay, that's the finisher. Um, that's the, uh, that's the vanish thing. Perishing strike. Versus fortitude. I mean, I can try. Corner position, you don't need that. Flurry of blades. The next attack will paralyze, but that's also versus fortitude. This is the gambit. There's one in here that's like increased penetration. I think it's the bell. Yeah. I feel like I should just I should just um spam this. I don't think she has any like long term buffs. They're all she it's all debuffs. 
I could try this. This it's gotta have low reflex. Okay, we're doing confounding blind. Because with all of us on it, it'll lower its deflection. Yeah, didn't work. Um, let's do a buff to buff on all of us. Uh, you did your flame shield. Let's do the plants. Oh, this lasts 50 seconds? Fuck. Uh, let's do the lance. The other one noticed you. Yeah, it's coming. I forget who has an immobilize now. One of us has an immobilize. I'll have to double check on that. Uh, his reflex is so fucking high. It's probably, I think it's one of his buffs. Uh, what am I looking for? Right, I wanted to check this. I want to compare this. When he's buffed, his stats get really fucking high. Uh, I want to compare this to the spear. What's the time on this? Okay, that's pretty quick. Alright, it's nature's marked. It's deep wounded. I didn't steal its armor. It's Oh, it's immune to a bunch of shit. It's weak to constitution afflictions. That seems odd to me, but sure. Fit hardy robust. Okay, and feeble weak and sickened. It's it's weak to these things. I'm sure I have one of these. It's weak to this. Silver is fortitude, but it's weak to it. Uh, I sure would love to know it's like fortitude. Its deflection isn't very high. I don't know if it was just because we lowered it a ton. It could be the, it just could be that. Okay, immobilize. Somebody has this. Somebody has an immobilize. Uh, I don't know who fucking has it though. I don't. All right, I have this. Okay. I need focus. <laughs> I need to give someone the blades so I can get extra focus. Probably give it to Edwin. That makes the most sense. Uh, who has the immobilize now? It's none of these. Uh, none of these. So it's not him. I swear I had one. Oh yeah, this is the one that, uh, like, gets stronger over time, so I'm gonna try this. Uh, whatever. I'll see it at some point. Uh, we have a buff to buff on. What other buffs can I give us? I should probably just give it, like, Divine Mark. I don't know what its deflection is currently. It's very low. I think we're fine. <laughs> I don't need to lower it anymore, I don't think. It seems like we're, all, we're always going to hit at this point. Nature's Mark is lasting 94 seconds. Check the spear damage. Okay, it is on. That is pretty high. I think that's higher than it was before. 33, 44 versus... Oh, I can't even fucking see his old weapon. <laughs> it is two-handed, though. That's the downside. He's not using a shield. But whatever. It seems to be doing... He doesn't really need the shield right now. Uh, that's good as well. He doesn't need it, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah. This does not work. What the fuck happened? Okay, he, he's doing his martial thing. That's still on. Uh, what's the penetration on this? 
12? That's pretty good. I can just do penetrating strike over and over. That was about as useful as a bump on a pick. Okay. What is okay, we're we're exploding. We are exploding. I need you to live. I need to move out of this. Whatever the fuck this is, is happening. I hope that she like Okay, she should live, so I'll give her the blades. This does not work. Uh, oh, she's engaged. So I wanna escape the... I can escape the engagement. With... Something. This is why it's very... I can just make her go invisible. Uh, there's, oh, yeah, just escape. Isn't there a better one? Charge of distracted. That switches places. Oh, this one, this one's the better one. She only has three points left, though. I mean, no, that's fine. Let's do that. Wait. Oh, she dives to a specific location afterwards the rogue's next primary type of hero. Okay. Let's just dive over there. For now. That was about as useful as a bump on a pickle. Alright, now she's got the blades. Now going for paralyze. Uh yeah, I'm assuming it can't be. No, that's probably I think it's a might affliction. Uh they do do a lot of damage. Uh, let's just throw down a heal. What is it? And then I'm also gonna give her penetration. Uh, you can keep doing this. Uh, I'm also gonna throw a heal into KU. That's not very helpful. All right, for the next 30 seconds, Edwin is. Wait, do the blades do raw damage? Oh, they do raw damage. Oh. I mean, it still says 12. It would have been, I guess, it, Penetration doesn't matter because it does raw damage. Okay, so that combo doesn't work. I don't need to do it. I should just put it on um, Aloth. Uh, Decay is, is hurting. <laughs> it's hurting a lot. Uh, can I withdraw him super quick? Alright, he'll be fine. Consecrate. Yes? Are you still doing things? That's uh, okay, I'm gonna helpful. penetrate. Oh. Extra penetrate. Oh, no. yeah. right, this is almost dead. Just it's now dead. We're almost dead. Uh, this, this heals a little bit. That gives extra defenses. Uh, I used up. The ground is currently consecrated, so this is my only option. What is the size of this? That's pretty big. We don't have any hostile effects, but I just need some healings. Blood. How may I help? He has so many buffs. It's kind of stupid. No. She's out of points. I'm cool with that. Can do a penetrating strike. Magnificent escape. I think that's on. That's on. Who has that? Nobody's wearing that. Well, when Takeo comes back, he can help. Yes. Uh. I don't know when. Can I stun it? 
It's for us as well. Let's try stunning it. We haven't really, like... Yes? Uh, debuffed this one. It's good that he's attacking Aeloth right now. How long is this withdrawal? Nine more seconds? Speak your mind. I forgot yes. how long that, fuck, that fucking thing is. Uh, hold on. We're still in the Consecration. I'm gonna do this. Uh, what happened with my thing, though? Didn't I, like... Oh, I missed. Okay. Oh, it's got a decently high will, but I'm gonna, I can do that again after I do the. Okay. Uh, do I need to? I mean, his spear wore off, but his penetration is 19, so. Oh, it's about to wear off. Uh, I'm just gonna put that on him again. Quitting knives wore off. All right. You're automatically engaged, which is, not, which is not how I wanted that to go. Oh, I didn't get to see how this works. That involves him running around. Uh, I mean, I could. I'm probably better off just doing this. Consecrate. You have heals. Moonwell, it should hit us all. I'll try stunning to like give us a give us a give us a second. Did you consecrate it? Okay, you did. Let's do buff to buff. Another nature's mark. Make it really small. Uh, you're at a point. You're out of buffs. Oh, he still has a few of them. Oh, he's getting interrupted. Uh, I really want to see how this works, so I'm just gonna cast it. Pollen patch. Happy to have time to separate the I never did the symbol. We can do the symbol. So like, what if I just run around? How long does the how do the things last? People getting healed by it? I don't understand. I can see the plants. This is this is weird. Okay, and it only lasts like thirty seconds, even though the spell didn't say anything. This is a weird spell. It says seven. It says it says it's like a fourteen radius. So maybe I don't need to move. Maybe it'll just heal people. Oh, it is just healing people. It's essentially a regen centered around him in a huge radius. And if someone dies, yes, then cool. This. That's not very helpful. All right, and then let's do the penetration for Ayla, and then you can do try entropy, and then did I do the symbol or not? Well, it doesn't matter. All right, the pollen patch is interesting. Good to know it lasts like thirty seconds. Yes, Captain. You need something. Oh, there's an Audra ban. Still running really fucking Parados, and now I can't like go to <laughs> go like shopping to see if I can get Parados. That's my biggest thing for like enchanting. Yeah, great. Now I can get legendaries, but I can't get to legendary. I can't fucking enchant.
I also like I need a shop to get more money. <laughs> to be able to do that. Uh uh. Oh. Well, I can do this one. So what is this? Uh, this is probably better. This is better. Let's do this. She's gonna need some armor rating to stay alive. Now I'm out of money. I should have sold all my shit. Also, I don't have Paradox. Cloak and Dagger. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, bad. that's bad. What's wrong place one time? time? This is when people are really nearby. Like, really nearby. Two meters is very small. Attacks against enemies with no nearby allies can interrupt. Oh, that's better. That's better than this one. I need reagents. I really should have. Could have bought them in Servant's Crown. Yeah, I just didn't look around. I didn't go shopping for them specifically. I just kept thinking, oh, I need to go shopping for these at some point, and I never did. Whatever, I'm sure we'll be fine. If all else fails, I'll just turn off the level scaling. We'll get through this. We will get through this. Oh, Jesus. We got a big city. Big, big old city to fight our way through. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not that big, but. It's even scarier than in my dreams. A furious storm obscures the sprawling city below. But you can make out the shape of distant spires reaching up from the flooded ruins. Spirit winds tug on your soul with insistence, like a stern hand trying to pull a cloak from your back. You recall the last time you encountered a Beowalk. Feels like a lifetime ago. So, here we are. You look to those who accompanied you this far, risk everything to face the confrontation ahead. Shody? We gonna do this or what? Shoddy licks her chapped lips, dark gaze narrowing as she takes in the sight of the ancient city's ruins. Raised high, her lantern casts hard shadows over the plains of her face. We've made it this far, yet we're still alive. Might as well square off with my god before our luck runs dry. No matter what happens, you got my back, right? She doesn't answer for so long that you think she's not going to. Then she taps her bloodstained sickle against her thigh. Sure do. If gone once you did... I figure he can do it himself. Besides, the part of him that's been stomping through the dead fire didn't much help me at Malgren's teeth. Mm hmm Tell me, Watcher, can there be a god of light and birth if souls themselves can no longer be reborn? Um, probably, yes. Uh, was it worth it? Reckon it was. Sure, I did some things I now regret. God knows I got plenty of blood on my hands. I thought it'd be different how it turned out. But I couldn't dream of any other way. Now then, shall we go face my god for one last time? Find out what it is we can or can't do in these end times. Whether we're meant to wither or thrive. Yep. Consider me your second shadow. Hey, Loth. Us. He looks out at the sprawling ancient city. Five years ago, you controlled the destiny of thousands of souls in sun and shadow. But the choice you make today shall define the fate of every living thing in Aora. Oh, he pities me. I mean, there are, there's other factors as well. I suppose that's true. And I suppose it can be comforting to remember that. 
I know you'll choose wisely. And no matter what happens, it's been an honor journeying with you. Again. You my bae. Love you, Ayla. Uh, I did want to ask his opinion as well, but apparently that's over. Uh, it's a I'm thinking that Aethys has come this far, and he will not wait on you before he finishes what he started. If he shatters what is sat in the heart of Ukaizo, this action will ripple beyond the dead fire, beyond life as we know it. The Hoana could use a change, an upset, something that gets them working together. History has shown that we thrive in adversity. Turns its face to his surroundings, struggling to take in everything at once. The land of my mother's, as real as anything that rises up from the bed of the sea. Also, smaller than I expected. Well, this should be as interesting as the last time I confronted a god-possessed Adra Colossus. All right, I know you haven't done this before, though. Captain, I am my mother's son. I have seen things you would not believe. What say? Shall we find him, Captain? I know nothing about Ewen, but apparently she wants to live forever. It wasn't the threat of death my procedure sought to avoid, but that of rebirth. Now I face the god of rebirth, who set on destroying the wheel. If I'd known She's undead. Advance, I guess perhaps I'd have she does look it, so. At sea. But I have not talked to her since I, like, hired her. Regardless, we are here now, and I stand ready. Let us finish this. Alright, let's go. To the spire, then. The music, the music cut out. Are we gonna see like, uh, are we gonna see like a C? Oh, <laughs> so, like CG movie, anime movie? Okay, this isn't. I was expecting like big dungeon, big, big climb, and we're just like, we're just going, we're just going. For soul guys, uh, are you reading the wiki again? You're reading the wiki, aren't you? No. Are you sure? Got this when I spoke to her. Uh, okay. You you've really just like powered through these two games. Though the device atop of the tower spins in wild blurring revolutions, the air around it is still and calm. You stand in the eye of the storm, which has cordoned off Andra's mortar from the rest of Aora for thousands of years. You see an antiquated, antiquated control, antiquated uh, control panel. Its levers engaged in positions of activation. Standing uncharacteristically still, Takeo turns his head to take on his surroundings all at once. Deep furrow cleaves his brow. What's up? I have stood here before. Okay, if you were hiding the secret path this entire time. Chuckles at you brushing the matter aside. I dreamed of a tower made of water. I stood at the pinnacle and made obeisance to Mother Ingati. This tower. This view. Uh maybe Ingati's trying to tell you something. Kara. Just so. Ngati's covenant. The first form of water shaping. It is here, waiting for me. Glances up the spinning machinery with a mixture of apprehension and wonder. I'm gonna look at it. Beyond the machinery itself, Takeyu seems to be focusing on the storms or merely the empty air. He shakes his head when he takes note of your attention. I can feel it all around this place. The ones who built these machines used our connection to Ngati against us. These storms are a perversion of my art, an expression of beauty as a weapon. Uh, do what you need to. So beautiful. But look what they have done with you. He reaches a shaking hand up to the storm, curling his fingers in as if to grasp at something. He covers his, his heart with one hand and lowers his head, muttering a slow and fervent prayer. 
From the broiling madness of the storm, a single drop of water lands on Takeo's brow, running down his cheek like a tear. Takeo wipes his eyes dry with his thumb. He pauses to stare down at his hand, as if seeing it for the first time. Say nothing. I... I remember. Clutches his hands into fists. The storm surges around you as the winds pick up speed. Takeo's head snaps back and his eyes squeeze shut in ag agony, ecstasy, or both. He rouses at last, shaking a few droplets of moisture from his hair. I am the tremor that inspires the tidal wave, the pebble that calls the avalanche. Mother, your son has found his birthright where you left it. Takeo raises his fist to the sky and lets out an uproarious laugh. Eventually, he shifts its focus over to you. My people never doubted that Ngachi's chosen would find our ancient gift. Takara, I did not share their confidence until now. I am ready, Watcher. Let us finish what we started. A deep percussion shakes the tower by its roots. Somewhere in the obscurity of the storm, Aethys rears back his fist to deliver a mighty blow. The control panel has weathered the millennia better than the rest of the city. A layer of dust covers its elegant glass tubes and engraved copper levers, which appear both intact and fully functional. It's deactivated. You grip the largest of the levers and bring it back to its starting position. The vibration of machinery gradually slows, and turbulent winds grow calm. Imagine if I didn't bring him, right? Never would have met his calling. That's kind of sad. The machine controlling the storm winds down. The clattering of its machinery settles into a low whir and then, at last, hiccups to a halt. Beyond the tower, the black, roiling clouds of Andra's mortar roll away from the ancient city of Ukaizo, with only a tired sigh of wind to see them off. And on that last breath of wind, comes to you a familiar sound. The ring of a bell. The bell's ringing is soft, not the clangor and torrent you've grown used to. It calls to your soul, and your soul yearns to follow it. Your soul flees from your body and into the beyond, chasing that sound. It leads you at last to Bareth's realm, to that cold platform and room of endless doors. Watcher, your journey nears its conclusion. The pallid knight stands before you, her gaunt face impassive. Uh, what will come after this? That will depend on the will of Kith whose desires are ever in flux. Soon you will confront Aethys for what will likely be the final time, and you will do so as the Herald of Bareth, the only creature on the face of Aora to whom he will listen. Remember that. The pallid knight inclines her head to you, black hair hanging lank in her face. She steps back and cedes the floor to Helia with a small, resigned sigh. If Aethys truly intends to go through with his mad plan to destroy the wheel, a generation's worth of souls will be trapped in the in-between. So many would suffer. How can Aethys be so cruel? He cannot just abandon them. Aethys must help the kids find a quick solution. Abaddon strides forward. Aethys thrust this crisis on the Kith. They did not bring it upon themselves. Their only mistake was entrusting us to watch over them. Who will help them rebuild their world now? Aethys will reveal every secret of the gods. Will Kith be able to change the established order if they have no wonder to inspire them? Aethys must help them resolve this quickly, lest every one of Aeora's few remaining mysteries be laid plain. Should Aethys leave the decision solely to Kith? You have misgivings. Good. You should be wary of any help Aethys might offer you. With the wheel destroyed, Kith will tear themselves apart. It is the gods' duty to prevent that happening, lest they doom us all. And as Kith must be ruled, so too must the gods. I say that if Aethys is so eager to throw down the mantle of power and step aside, I shall take my rightful place as Queen of the Gods again. 
Kith are strongest when they follow our lead. And we are strongest when we lead in turn. United in purpose with the gods, Kith can accomplish things that without us, they could never have even begun. They must be shown their boundaries to surpass them. Kith will not solve Aethys' puzzle on their own. And without an established order to fight against, the bonds that bind them dissolve, and they fight amongst themselves. I mean, they already are fighting amongst themselves. What's really going to change? The only thing that's going to change is their role in it. When you think about it. Um, how can we trust you to lead us after this? You cannot trust us, and you never should have. Only the kith may save themselves. Mordecai's firm hand is but the motherly smothering of Helia by another name. Mortals should have no special advantages. Only once kith have striven to improve themselves through trial will they truly know their measure. Kith must suffer to find their strength if they are to survive the world into which Aethas drags them. Our intervention in your struggle would be a cruelty and counter to our purpose. He lets his words hang in the air for a moment. Gaze, level with your own. Indeed. Kith must discover for themselves what it is they are worth, and of what it is they are capable. What we do for them, they do not learn for themselves. Trial breeds ingenuity. If our work of generations was not in vain, Kith will succeed in spite of Aethys' actions. I have faith in Kith's ability to meet Aethys' challenge. Do not mistake my words for indifference, Watcher. They are born from a fierce belief in your potential, not a refutation of it. Hmm. He wouldn't do this if he didn't agree with you. And yet you come to Okaizo with only the Huana at your back. All that Kith stand to lose. And even then, your leaders could not join hands, squabbling instead over prestige and resources. You believe that will change when my final death comes calling? You are a greater fool than I thought. Just trying to be optimistic here. I, I completely believe and agree with you. Margren is blinded by her affection for mortals. She does not see that entropy is the destiny of all things. If Aethas were wise, he would destroy everything. End life. End reincarnation. End death. That's a little extreme. Kith have had their chance. It is time to let silence reign. As Rimmergon's words fade, the Pallid Knight returns. She no longer towers over you, a giant even among the gods, but meets you at your height. She lets the arms crossed over her chest fall to her sides. She speaks to you openly, plainly, an expression almost like tenderness turning up the corners of her lips. Well, Watcher, you know where we stand. What do you believe? Um... I don't care. That's pretty. That's a pretty good answer. I don't care. <clears throat> um... I'm gonna go with the change. It demands sacrifice. Coming days will be hard, but we'll be better for it. Take care that you do not sacrifice all, Watcher. Only what you must. The things you stand to lose. Lives, institutions, beliefs. You may lose for good. Now the time has come for us to part, Watcher. Your driver seems to be lost. That happens to me sometimes. I laid upon you a difficult duty. You will be free of it in time. But not now. You have work to do yet. 
Remember, you alone may sway Aethys now. When you stand before him, choose your words carefully. The gods depart one by one in brooding silence. A solitary figure remains perfectly still until the last of her colleagues is out of earshot. Wodica peers down at you, a triumphant grin splitting her weathered features. Gareth is a fool if she thinks I'll let her enjoy the last word. You were trusted with a heavy responsibility, Watcher. Speaking for mortals and representing their interests in the future to come. Did my choices teach you anything? You were wrong to trust the Huana. They built their society to last. But that hasn't stopped their tribes from buckling under the pressure of foreign occupation. How many of her people did Queen Onakase imperil while she placated her enemies? How close did her simpleton brother come to drawing his weapon at every negotiation? Then there's the deplorable incident at the Powder House. Yeah, I regret doing that. And yet, they have earned your confidence in a gamble that could decide the fate of all mortals. Why is that? Um... You know, I don't fucking know. I really don't. I really don't know. I say nothing. Uh -huh. Consider my curiosity appeased. For now, in our grandest plans, you are a singularly unpredictable area. That's me. You play a dangerous game by investing your hope in others. Deception and failure are woven into the fabric of mortals. I can safely promise that they will disappoint you before long. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> they already have. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, Sarka, you're inspirational as ever. Encouragement is not in my portfolio. You come to me for justice, vengeance, and harsh reality. Whether you heeded my wisdom or not, everything you've done to get this far has informed our view of mortal kind. I hope you're satisfied with your performance. We've learned much from each other. Did I really make a difference? Nothing could convince me that mortals are equipped to steward their future. Your efforts to prove me wrong were admirable. And my detractors will likely use your example to oppose my rule. The Juana may reign over this archipelago for now. But Aora is vaster than they know. A difficult road lies ahead of me. Your alliances have made proving my argument an uphill battle. Well done, I suppose. Aethys will no doubt have a sunnier outlook on mortals and their chances of success. He already has everything he wants, so go and listen to his empty-headed idealism. The rest of us will be sharpening our blades, preparing for the future he lays out for us. Ooh, levels. Consciousness returns in a wave as the last of the machine's energy dissipates. There he is. The calming of the storm reveals the sprawling city around you like sand wiped from a mosaic. You see the distant outline of Aethys raising his fist in triumph and purpose. It seems we're all still here. Do not touch the machine again, I say. <laughs> the delicate fish can only take so much. Is that a euphemism for a certain part of your body? God's darnation. My head. My delicate fish. Peering over the edge of the tower, you make out a distant shape amid the ruins below. An iron-studded warship has dropped anchor in the shallows, its cannons angled to the shore. The ship is nearly cracked in half, but the standard of the Royal Deadfire Company persists in flapping. Why do they never just fuck off? The empty deck tells that the surviving crew has long since boarded a skiff and rode to shore, which means you're no longer alone on Ukaizo. 
This is literally what- Sigh and draw my weapon. That's literally what I'm gonna do. Level 20! This is- this is my chance to finally know. Is 20 max or does it go higher? I am gonna take the death of a thousand cuts. And... What two weapons am I- I'm, I have a two-handed setup right now. In addition to, like, the two-handed setup. Uh, it's a great mace. Maybe I should just take this. Body blows. Lowest fortitude? I'm down for that. Oh, it is max level. I just got achievement. Straight up. Can't get any stronger. Uh, I don't think I need higher than that. Uh, what was the other one I was thinking of? I think it was Whale. Yeah, enemies are blinded and we all get defenses. Uh, the other bow, I guess. Alright, Takehu. Alchemy! Inside. Uh... Lame. All right, so tornado or great maelstrom. This seems more disruptive. Area of effect five. Lists its victims into the air and deal crush damage. I mean, this is more likely to hit because of like it's not just one thing. This only lasts six seconds, though. Whereas this lasts... Oh, this is, has no, like, long-term thing. Uh, I kind of want to see people get knocked up and down, so I'm taking the tornado. So it, really, it really doesn't matter either way. Uh, okay. He's already proficient with everything he's using. Uh... I don't fucking know. Stiletto, sure. He's like halfway to 20. She's 17. Alright! To the end, my friend. We're probably gonna have to fight Maya. I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I have to go, I have to go, I'm gonna have to do a fight in here and I have to get through. Because that's where the wheel is, I assume. It's Moy Gwyneth. Yup, is Maya in there? And I think it's her right there. How's that new E? Kuru, I should have just killed them all before. Approaches her weapon drawn. Her face is bruised and cut, and her uniform torn from the rough journey. But her eyes are clear and focused on you. What you people from lush, bright lands fail to grasp is that Rawatai isn't a storm-tossed spit of land. It's the Kith who stand together there. Captain, watcher, there's a right and a wrong about this, drawn as clearly as a line in the sand. I know what side I'm on. She grips her weapon and stares you down as she's a glance between you, seeming less certain. Okaizo belongs to us. We've earned it with blood and sweat. Ugh. And no one shall take it from us now. Why are we arguing when Aeth is just, this is just my way of getting out of this, <laughs> this situation. He's destroying the cycle. I can't stop him. Neither can you. But I can give my country a chance of weathering what comes next. Can I just blow everything up? Roatians, defend Ukaizo. <sighs> I should have just fucking, I should have just fucking killed them. I hate, I hate this. All right, you want to die? Fine. It's about fucking time I did this. Let's start. With the tornado. Is that the one I want? Or do I want to do freezing pillar? Let's do a tornado. It's my new spell. 
7.1 radius? Go fuck yourself. Uh, there's Aloth. Uh, where am I? I'm like in the middle? Alright, even. Oh, even stunned. Uh, I'm gonna go back here and like go. Alright, people are doing nothing. Hold on. We're actually getting kind of fucked. Mostly because of the stuns. Uh, the tornado should fuck up. Fuck up them, at least. Ah, uh, Jesus. Uh, I need to do a chill fog on... LOL! <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, all right, two can do the stun game. We took, we've taken so much fucking damage. It's unreal. Uh, I'm gonna try stunning him. Stop saying that. Is it because I'm getting interrupted? I feel like I'm getting interrupted out of my out of my casts. Oh no, I am casting it. Uh. That increases defenses. I don't really have like a regen. Uh, aside from consecrated grounds, so just do that. Uh, I'm actually gonna get you to flurry. It's it's like it's all these ranged people that are just like destroying us. So I'm gonna have you go over here because there's less less of them. Uh, the chill fog never occurred. I really need to blind them. How big will this be? Only 3.5. So I can make, I'm just gonna make it bigger. I don't know how big this is gonna be, but I wanna get all of them. Because we're just constantly getting completely fucked. What is Langrass reflection? I'm gonna go. On, I'm gonna go on the non-reflected dude. Fight on, Choji. Uh, and then we'll do perishing strike. Okay, this is bullshit. What is it? Look how many of them are of them there are. Back on your feet. All right, that'll heal us. Look how fucking many of them there are. Like we're dead. Like we're just dead. Unless she gets a res off, we're just dead. There's no way around this. I didn't even get to cast the fucking, the blind. I didn't even get the fucking. I tried chill fog like three times. Why are they fighting me? Because it's because it's fucking. I hate this. I actively hate this. This entire situation is retarded. I don't. I hate that I just said that word. I need to stop saying that word. Like this feels actively stupid. This the the just the entire fact that they're like, who cares is ours? I hate it. This is. I just I'm just I'm just turning this off. Like that was that's impossible. That's legit. Just the amount of destruction yes. that rained upon me was so fast and swift. I couldn't even get a few. I got like. One and a half spells out. There are so many things in this game that feel intelligent, and this just really doesn't. Like... I, it feels like no matter what, you're gonna end up fighting somebody here. And it's just a question of who... 
what you people Captain Kaizo okay. and no one shall take it from us. I don't want to fight you. This is greater than the two of us, Watcher. Rawatians, defend Ukaizo. This is so fucking stupid. Everything about this is stupid. Alright, you're closer to the front, so you do the chill fog. Do that. Actually, no, let's just fill it with chill fogs. Uh, you go there. You just make your. No, make it big. I think I'm making it big. Pretty sure I scrolled the right direction. I really don't know. Uh, I'm gonna summon. What is it? Uh, I'm gonna summon. What? Why can't I use this? It only has eight uses? Well, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, what is insightful? Perception? Let's just, let's just help. Let's just, like, be helpful. Uh, I don't have any things like that. Alright, we got Bless. Uh, Alright, everyone's blind. Gonna be blind for a while. They're all running forward. This will hit everyone. That actually doesn't do a lot of damage. Oh. Oh. It lasts for 13 seconds, does it? Never mind. I don't care if I hit the summon. The range on this is really small, though. I want to go there. No Alright, he's got that. Uh, let's go to the ground. I want to do the defensive mind weave. Uh, Eda's not doing... I'm not making Eda do anything. Edwin. Why well, I keep calling her Eda for some reason? Uh, just have her go there for now. While you do Flame Shield. And... Iron Skin. And... Uh, they're all very clump thanks to the blind, so let's just paralyze everybody. Why is Shodi getting super fucked? What's going on? Yes. I'm waiting for the defensive mind weave, but it's not coming out. I need to do some regen here. Uh, I think I'm free to just until the Aleth gets starts getting hit. I'm not gonna bother with 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 the unbending trunk. Uh, did he did he cast this or no? 11 misses? Oh, the Hawks are immune. That's fine, but like... Why are they all immune? What? They're all immune? Why? Why? Is it the Bell of Eternity blocking my view? Uh, sure. I don't know why they're immune. Like, what? Everyone's immune to this? Uh, whatever. Uh, do I have any more, like, AoE things I can just throw in there? I guess the Piercing Burst. I'd prefer them to be more in the middle for that, but, you know. I suppose it's an, it should hit. I'm gonna move in here. Makes no difference. Now we can do the the burst. Uh, we got a moon well. Uh, the pillar's doing shit. 
They are so clumped, it's nice. I don't think this will reach. It does a lot of damage. Uh, this will reach. I don't need to shape it, because it'll just hit everything. Yeah. Uh, or I should do one of these. Some of them have some, like, beneficial effects. Like, the con if I could get rid of the constant recovery sooner, that would be cool. So I might do the Rimmergand. Or keep blinding them. How long does the Chill Fog last? 21 seconds. It's probably gonna la it's probably gonna run out, so I'm gonna do the blind. Uh, friendly target, plus six point, okay. Oh, it's from her. No, actually, no, I'm gonna do this. How big is this? Lasts for 18 seconds. I'm gonna do this one. Uh, defense. Actually, <sighs> sheer defenses. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the, do the time thing. How many people does it hit? Seven? I'm doing the time thing. Uh, you're doing things. Alright, I turned off the level scaling and people are blowing up. I'm much happier now. Look how much easier this is. <laughs> Holy shit. They're dead. They're, they're just dead. Maybe if I got in the blind off last time, it would have been, it would have been like, it's, it, that was definitely part of it, is blinding everybody until so they all just clump up. The onion, onion culture is ever tasty. I love it. It's so good. I don't even care that I had to kill Maya. That was just stupid. There's something about uh, there's something about this that just feels stupid. Like it just feels stupid. It's like everyone's got like complicated like like motivations, and it's like everything's all nuanced, and suddenly it's like my 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 Okaizo, that's mine. It's like. It just like it just like it's done. It feels like it got completely dumbed down. Just just being like, you know what? It's fucking mine. And like, it doesn't even matter what my intentions are. I could be here to save it just because I like chose the Huana. Like, no fuck, no, it's mine. Play the game again. I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if this happens. Regardless, it's just who it is. Because I did some reading. Apparently, you can't choose everyone. Like, you can't get everyone to work together. Maybe you can, and no one's figured it out. I don't know. Oh, this is Maya's armor. It just... There's something about it that feels really dumb. A sure thing. Hmm? I hate it. I'm not impressed with this faction encounter. You descend into the ancient winding streets of Ukaizo. Battered by storms for thousands of years, the ruins bear the marks of their role as the lone witnesses of the gods' great secret at the center of the city. The houses and boulevards are pierced by great spears of luminous Audra. There are no ashen bodies, no birds, no sign or sound of any life. But with every step, the rhythmic pounding in the distance draws nearer. Soon, you can feel the vibration traveling up your spine. As you approach the center of the city, the weathered architecture gives way to more luminous Audra piercing the ruins, eventually overtaking them entirely. Cresting the top of a fallen tower, you finally get a clear view of Aethys. He stands. Legs astride, next to a great stone monument ringed with eleven cavernous alcoves. All but three 
hold a gargantuan skeleton, bones scrubbed clean by the city's storms. Wasn't there a guardian? Hold on. There was a, there were like there's a multi-headed dragon guardian in your way, by the way. An immense anguithin machine floats above the monument, suspended by invisible energy emanating from a well of light beneath it. Great brass rings spin around a core of metal and audra at the machine's center. Periodically, Aethys's massive arms swing back. The movement alone is enough to draw great gusts of wind toward him. That's what the dragon held off for you. Oh, yeah. The, machine, the impacts are accompanied by eruptions of electricity, fire, and smoke. The hundreds of luminous Audra pillars across Ukaizo sympathetically dim in a rippling wave that spreads out from the machine. I forgot about that bit. About, like, the machine thing in the water. The only safe route to the god is a steep ascent along a monstrous pillar of luminous Audra. Intertwined with fragments of Ukaizo's ruins that it has carried through the centuries, the pillar bends in a long arc, towering above the machine. The pillar levels out near Aethys' head, a silent observer to the destruction of the machine it has grown beside over thousands of years. You weave your way along a treacherous, rain-slicked path up the pillar's skyward side. As you arrive at the top, you catch Aethys' attention. Fist pulled back, he pauses to observe you. With the same gentleness he showed at Ashen Law, he lowers his arm and turns toward you. in this way it may be hard to picture but this city was once full of life the Hawana, yes but also kith from many other cultures great hanging trees shadowed these boulevards gardens sprawled across the open rooftops each spring a festival procession would wind its way from the hillside into this valley the celebrants would pass through a steep walk among the stalls of foreign merchants, flowers falling upon them from all sides. All people of all nations, together in a celebration of new life. Such was the power and beauty of Lost Ukaizo. Mighty One, I once desired to return that power and beauty to the Juana. Now I wish only for the tribes to find it themselves. If not here, then elsewhere. Was I wrong? Have I failed them? Takehu, the gods have already decided so much of your life. I would not shape what remains of it. You know how your people could benefit from your help. You have also come to see that this life is yours to live as you choose. Deciding what course to take is not easy. But if you do not choose, your life may pass you by as you stand at the crossroads. Gone, please, I'm begging you. What do I do following this? How... How am I to best serve those still living, to improve our future chances of survival? The Dead Fire and the Eastern Reach are full of animancers, women and men with brilliant minds who can solve this great problem. They will also need people with brilliant souls, like you, Shodi. People who can tend to the spiritual needs of the world in a time of fear and desperation. Remember, the flame you bear is not only light, but warmth. Provide comfort to all who need it. Aeloth shakes his head, looking up at Aethys. What right do you have to do this? Destroy the wheel and leave us with nothing? Without even knowing what will come next? Aloth, we are all gods and mortals, responsible for our own actions. But inaction carries its own moral responsibility. It is a burden I have carried for far too long. One must always do as their conscience dictates, 
even if that means abdicating a position of power. But what of you, Watcher? Why have you followed me? Have you come to bear witness to the breaking of the wheel? Hmm. I don't want him to want him to destroy everything. Um, I've not come to fight him. I've decided to let him do it. It's just, what do I want to say? Um, we're also gonna need a head start to prevent the gods from reestablishing control. Uh, I kind of want to say either two or three. <laughs> Lol, Smasher Bra. Uh, if only. Um. I'm gonna see if he'll Mortals are gonna need a head start. Mortals are already inspired. It is what has pushed them on for hundreds of generations to reach this point in time. That's a fair point. Animancy is poised to go far beyond what we and Gwythans ever discovered. Why do you, why does Helia, think I should lend more power to mortals? It's, it's either to ensure the gods don't have an upper hand, or uh, because I believe in Kith. I'm going to say because I believe in Kith. As do I. From where should mortals draw their inspiration? Uh, to the future! Very well, Watcher. I will ensure that mortals are inspired by my passing, that my power not be expended in vain. Indulge me in a moment's curiosity. There is something I wish to know about Aeora, about Kith, that I can only learn through your eyes. Go on. You followed me all this way. Dodging an armada. And bullshit. Navigating an impenetrable wall of storms. And bullshit. Voyaging across uncharted seas. And bullshit. With the machinations of gods echoing in your ears. All the while trusting in the institutions of Kith to get you this far. And earning their trust in turn. Whatever else happens this day, that much is remarkable. I believe that mortals possess the strength to collaborate and shape a future of their own design. Not all of my brothers and sisters agree. By relying on others and coming together in a time of crisis, you illustrate my point. The gods will witness you and question their assumptions about how responsible, empathetic, and sophisticated mortals can be. So this is now convincing me that if I had gone solo, he would not be very impressed with me right now. What inspired your decision, Watcher? Did the choice echo your foundational beliefs? Or were you influenced by observation? I do want to strengthen and unify the tribes. I'm going to say I believe in their cause, even though I kind of regret it. It's the best answer I can give here, because I do want to give them some explanation. I don't want to be uh, this flippant. So I'm going to say one or two. I don't want to say it's theirs to rule. I don't want justice for them. I just I believe in I believe in the cause. I believe in what they can be come. I thank you for your perspective. Yours is not the only opinion that concerns me. But for the moment, it offers much to consider. I guarantee that like that, that encounter, like whoever I guess you've pissed off the most with your allegiance. 
or you, whoever you end up, if you go solo, whoever you have the least uh, reputation with, like the most negative one, will be there to be like, fuck you, Kaizo is mine. You have to fight somebody. I feel like, unless everyone's dead, or everyone loves you, I, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It feels like no matter what, you're going to have to encounter some faction. All I ever wanted for mortals was growth. Transformation. Once, my brothers and sisters shared this goal. Some have forgotten themselves, giving in to fatalism or tyranny. Others have succumbed to apathy. And like I said before, thanks, I hate it. It brings me great sorrow that crisis is the only way to set the future in motion. Would that I could pass the responsibility of heralding your darkest hour to another. Like, imagine if I had come here solo. I'm still thinking about it. Imagine if I had come here solo. And it just happened, like... Because then Maya would still be in my group. It just happened that, like... I guess whoever likes me the least would probably show up and be like, What did you... What did you left everyone behind? You're taking your Kaizo from us. That's mine. And, like, I probably would have ended up being, like, the Principe or, like... Who likes me the least? The Valians, I guess? Because I basically didn't deal with them at all? Like, if I had not blown up the Royal Dead Fire, and just been like, fuck y'all, I'm gonna go through solo. Guarantee somebody's gonna be like, yo. I like you the least, therefore you're fighting me. That's what it feels like. That's why I hate it. Never forget that trust and coordination between mortals brought you to this place. Your future is built on a foundation of hope, and you have laid the first stone. Should I ask him questions? I'm gonna ask him questions. Ask. You are entitled to any answer that is mine to give. You've had millennia to do this, why now? For several reasons. My strength was diminished after the God Hammer Bomb, and assuming this form took incredible effort, with so many vying for control of the dead fire, I also saw a ripe opportunity for mortals to cast aside their differences and stand together as one. They have never been more powerful, more capable. Because of this, the gods must justify their importance or be proven obsolete. All right, so what happens after the wheel breaks? The great work of the Ingwithans falls to ruin. Reincarnation as we know it will end. As we know it will end. Souls which currently await new life in the beyond will be born into the world as normal, but their numbers will not replenish. Yeah, but who's to say you can't have new souls? Anything that dies will tarry in the void of the in-between, awaiting the motion of a wheel that no longer turns. Once the beyond has emptied, every birth will be hollow-born. Other maladies of the soul may follow and plague those who linger in life. Unless mortals work together to carve a new path, the essence of life will be trapped in the netherworld. Gods will starve. Aora will grow silent and cold. Why well, won't I just go back to how it was before? When we tamed the cycle of reincarnation, we broke what had once functioned naturally and without intervention. The flow of essence will not normalize on its own. Essence will simply pool in the void of the in-between, never passing through Adra networks to the beyond. The dead will be left to wander in darkness, confusion, and sorrow. So Wodoka thinks we're gonna fail this test. Wodoka is entitled to her opinion. If the intent of this test is to justify an uprising to come, that is more worrisome. Uh, I wish you could have fully loaded a save and got your character you had in the first. If you changed it, people would be all like, Whom, you look different. I feel like there was a brief mention at the very beginning of the game. The other gods must decide for themselves if mortals are ready to dictate their future. Should Wodoka's tyranny prove the only alternative, Mortals must prepare for a terrible conflict. Your perspective bridges eternity, Watcher. 
Many will look to you to mediate differences that could shake the very foundations of Aora. So how long do you think we have? A generation or more. That much essence is already poised to flow into Aora. But unlike an hourglass, no amount of turning will compel the sand to reverse its course. Should you choose, you could lay down your burden and trust in your children's children to set matters right. That depends entirely on you. By your reckoning, there are still good years to come. By ours, time is short. Uh, you're threatening the gods as well. Yes. They must work toward a solution or perish. If that task is beyond their skill, then they no longer deserve their position. I would have them justify their right to lead. That could mean swallowing their pride and hearkening to the wisdom of mortals. Some, I expect, will perform better than others. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with the other two. I must attend to my final work now. I cannot delay any longer. You have carried a heavy burden across the dead fire, Watcher. Before I go, I would rid you of it. No sooner have Anthus' words entered your mind than you hear one final dissonant ring of a chime within you, then silence. The knot that formed when the Pallid Knight first addressed you in the beyond is now gone. Ooh. You are free now. As free as any of us can be. Yeah, at this point, the Cad Noir thing is very petty. <laughs> it's like, you know, whatever. I got a ship now. Many will come to you for help in the years ahead. Animancers, priests, even the gods themselves. You're going to say that? I expected nothing less. I have great hope for you. But always remember that your future is for you to decide. Use your freedom well. Aethys squares himself to the machine. As you move to a safe distance, he draws his fist back and resumes his assault. The blows rain down with increased fervor, but the machine perseveres in spite of his efforts. Spreading his arms wide, Aethys draws power from the luminous Audra clustered around the valley. The energy courses through his body, limbs overflowing with intense light and waves of heat. He returns to his task, each strike bringing with it the sound of cracking stone and twisting metal, the flickering of luminous Audra across Ukaizo. As the ancient machine finally begins to succumb to his strength, so too does Aethys's body, built to withstand the passage of thousands of years. The great Audra statue has finally been pushed beyond its limits. Cracks appear along the hands, then race up the arms. Aethys does not slow his assault, but continues unabated. Its brass rings twisted. The machine spins erratically, but withstands the relentless barrage. Aethys stands astride it and pummels the base of the machine. Soul energy begins to flare out from the machine's heart, warping the air with the intense heat. Aethys drives his right fist into the machine's center, the core of metal and Audra. The god lets out a deafening shout, something between a cry of anguish and a roar of exultation. You see Aethys' arm shatter upward from his hand through his elbow. A flash of light and heat bursts from the core, accompanied by a cacophony of destruction. The moment passes. As Aethys' shout echoes throughout the valley, your eyes begin to recover. The god's work is accomplished. The great machine of Ukaizo has been destroyed. The wheel has been unmade. I feel like this is a decision I'm not going to regret. The more I talked to him, the more I talked to the other gods, the more I kind of was like, you know what, let's just break the wheel. I'd rather break it. I'm down for breaking it, because why not? As Aethys' voice fades, 
The enormity of what you've accomplished sinks in. You have confronted a god. You have rediscovered the ancient city where the wheel was forged, and you have seen the wheel shattered. What comes next is uncertain, but already the legend spreads of the Watcher, who survived Andra's mortar and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aethys. On your recommendation, Aethys disperses his essence and that of the thousands of souls within him to centers of knowledge and learning around the world. Animancers, engineers, wizards, and scholars of all stripes make astounding breakthroughs in understanding and harnessing the phenomena that govern Aora. Okay, I'm waiting for the downside to this. I did say do it. I did go out of my way to say, hey, be like, hey, do it. But like, historically, uh, when mortal creatures suddenly get extra knowledge, they tend to not use it very well. Maybe I should have just let it nat let them naturally figure the shit out instead of giving them like a godly boost. While some of these developments prove beneficial to Kith, others are decidedly less so. But such is the price of innovation. What remains to be seen is how, indeed, whether they will restore the cycle Aethys has broken. I suppose that's up to them. I made my decision. Reclaiming Ukaizo is both a symbolic and a practical victory for the Hoana. The ancient city is a potent reminder of their people's ancient glory, and it promises to be a much more easily defensible capital, especially with the storm controls of Andra's spire close at hand. The other tribes unite under the Kahanga and dedicate themselves to rebuilding Ukaizo and relearning its secrets. The Valian Trading Company continues its operations in Deadfire, though it is forced to renegotiate many of its contracts with the newly empowered Juana Crown. Company leadership finds that the new terms are much more favorable to the tribes than to their own interests in the region. Alright, that sounds good to me. Due to these changes, the Valian Trading Company eventually withdraws most of its people from Deadfire. Cool. The Royal Deadfire Company is expelled from the archipelago as punishment for their attack at Andra's Mortar. Here's the thing. I feel like this is going to happen to anyone is how it feels to me. The storms across the Rawatayan mainland subside along with those of Andra's Mortar. However, Rawatai regards this respite with a wary eye, ever mindful that the machinery at Andra's Spire remains under their foe's control. With the Juana settling in at Ukaizo and both Valian and Rawatayan trade reduced, Deadfire becomes a much less tempting target for Aldi's Principi. The end of the storms at Audra's Mortar, however, offers tantalizing possibilities, new lands, and fatter prizes. Aldi's leads the new bloods across the sea in search of fresh adventures. Did I did I unknowingly and accidentally bring like Massive, like, unification and peace to the entire archipelago. The mysterious deaths of Governor Clario and Storm Speaker Ikawa provoke hostilities between the Valian settlers and the Huawan residents. What starts with angry words escalates to retaliatory killings as each side blames the other. I don't know if I could do anything about this. This was definitely, like, this is... Uh, Akawa was the, the assassination that Maya did. Governor Clario... I didn't know he was dead. By the time anyone bothers to question the strange coincidences surrounding their deaths, including reports of a cloaked Omawi woman seen in both the port and the village, both sides have gone too far to turn back. I mean, Maya's dead now. I had to fucking kill her. The conflict eventually draws the attention of Queen Onikaza who sends a contingent of warriors to drive the remaining Valians from the island. Port Mage becomes a cautionary tale for outsiders who would abuse the hospitality of the Huana tribes. As the balance of power changes in Deadfire, so too does Nekataka transform. Though the Kahanga monarchy moves its new seat of government to Ukaizo, Nekataka continues to be a busy and important city. 
Come on, improvements in the gullet. Come on, improvements in the gullet. The pirates continue smuggling food into the gullet, and the Raparu embrace their benefactors, aiding and concealing their smuggling operations. Over time, the gullet becomes a hotbed of piracy. Ukaizo reveals more about the ancient art of water shaping than the guild could have hoped to learn in another century of work. With this new knowledge, water shapers across the archipelago wield the currents and bend the waves for the pleasure and benefit of the new Juana nation. I was expecting like a secondary gullet thing. It's just like, no, it's just filled with piracy now because you, you, you kind of started the relationship. I was like, oh, I mean, whatever, like... It's better than non-piracy. They were literally starving to death and dying of disease. Your brief encounter with Letharn proves deeply influential for the children of the Dawnstars. Who? Who was Letharn? Is that the woman that I helped, like... Is she the one that... Was she, like, the director? Plagued with nightmares and haunted by the deaths at Hesongo, Letharn begins questioning his faith in Aethys. I forget first, who he is. His fellow Dawn Stars chide him. But that changes as word of Aethys' deeds at Ukaizo spreads. After all, what business have they worshipping a god who denied his own legitimacy? The faith of the children of the Dawn Stars fades, but their commitment to the people of Deadfire does not. They continue feeding, healing, and helping the neediest, just as they have for decades. It is no longer a holy mission, but it is a mission all the same. I wish I could remember who that, like, Lethon person was. Ruanu, the chieftain of the Juana at Tikawara, dies mysteriously. The tribe finds his body washed up on the same beach where Anaharu challenged him to the Trial of Waves. Some blame Anaharu's vengeful spirit. Others see it as Ngati's final judgment and a few speak of a strange man seen lingering in the village. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I was, I was on the side of the, of the priestess on that one. Rani was like, no, we will, I will, we will keep the storms and have everyone nearly starve to bring the valiant in. It's like, that was, it was such a bad, it was such a bad plan. This economic plan for the future was terrible. The leaderless tribe eventually scatters. Oh. Some head to Nikitaka, while others seek out the Wahaki. What about the priestess? She could have taken over. She was pretty good. Ships continue to disappear at the southeastern fringe of the archipelago. Whatever. And stories circulate of a colony of vampires and gulls preying on their crews. Oh yeah, I just literally never went there, so... <laughs> This is, the, I think this is a DLC thing. I was like, no, I'm gonna ignore this. The queen soon sends a contingent of her bravest warriors who end the horrors of Splintered Reef. All right, well, it gets solved. The dead flow, an iceberg in the Southern Sea continues to grow unchecked. I don't even know what this is. As the ice spreads, so too do wild tales of a hideous dragon rampaging across the dead fire. I mean, it's cool looking. Would have been a hard fight. Word spreads of the primal island of Kazuwari once home to an arena that hosted bloody competitions and More fierce DLC. ordeals. Wild tales whisper that the spilled blood attracted a terrible beast of scale and fang that slaughtered those gathered at the island before destroying the great enchanted statue that oversaw the island's trials. Absent its guiding voice, Kazuwari descends into anarchy. A vast monstrosity of tentacles and flesh erupts from the Black Isles in the eastern dead fire before vanishing into the depths. What the fuck is this? None know what drives the titanic beast, nor where it will appear next, or what destruction it might wreak when it rises. Yeah, it looks cool as shit. That would have been kind of cool to, to interact your with. Your adventures alter the destiny of Aora and the balance of power in dead fire. They also leave a lasting mark on those who travel at your side. You're dead. Your companions find themselves changed in ways both big and small. You're dead. Adair returns to Hasongo, where he reunites with Burn, the oh, son nice. of his former lover, Elafa. However, 
The visit does not go as planned. Distraught upon learning that he has truly missed the chance to help Aethys in his greatest moment, uh, Burn spurns Adair's offer of guidance. Uh, probably should have brought Adair. He disappears from Hesongo soon after, Fuck. leaving Adair alone there with only memories of the boy's mother for company. Eventually, Adair finds his way back to rejoin you on the Defiant. Oh, okay. Well, my boy comes back. It's okay. I'll make him feel better. My bad, dude. My bad. Shodi is not a priestess who understands the meaning of subtlety. It's true. As such, she makes her girlish crush on Adair painfully obvious from the moment she first sets eyes on the strapping fighter. Early in your travels, Adair appears discomforted by her persistent flirting. He often grimaces when she sidles up to him, and he takes endless pains to keep their conversations terse and to the point. But after a little smoothing on your part to nudge them in the right direction, Adair makes an effort to view Shodi with an open mind. And Shodi begins teasing the veteran fighter in a more companionable and less amorous manner. After saving each other's hides a couple times and sharing more than a few laughs, the two form an easy, and you suspect, lifelong friendship. Yeah, see, I fostered a good friendship. They were not fit. They were not probably not good for each other. Maybe in the end, because Aethys, because it was all based on Aethys. I also didn't know I was gonna like let him break the wheel, and uh, disperse his existence at the time. To be fair, um, <laughs> but that's still that's a that's a nice ending. They don't have to like get married and shit. Seemingly lit with an inner glow. Shodi takes to a new life of mission work with Gusto. She still is committed to shepherding souls for Gon, but having realigned her goals with that of her fellow Dawn Stars, she now endeavors to help the living as much as the dead. Good. As you travel the dead fire, you find her sleeping better and laughing more often. When the time comes for her to return to her temple in Nekataka, it's with a clear wistfulness and much lip biting on her part. She leaves you with her sickle and a hastily scrawled note. It reads, A keepsake from a path once walked. Remember me, Watcher, for I will forever dream of you. Oh. As much as I lost all respect for Shodi during that first, her first encounter with Aesis, and she went all like super, super chatty fangirl, as much as I lost all respect for her in that moment, she is she she was a very sweet and loving character and I did she was better than Durance. Fuck Durance. Fuck that dude. Aloth renews his commitment to transforming the leaden key from a tool of secrecy and oppression into a watchdog organization. With the wheel broken, he reasons the world will need wise and responsible leadership more than ever. It is a lofty goal and one he does not expect to finish in his lifetime. But if there's one thing he's learned from the Watcher, it's that a single person can change the world. Oh, I inspired him. That's cool, I love Aloth. He killed himself in my ending. I don't know what happened to Durance in my ending. I don't fully remember. I feel like it was something bad. I remember being like, good. Fuck that guy. It was. Did you ever like spend the time to really talk to him and really like understand? how he thinks and what he thinks because it is fucked up he's a fucked up man like seriously fucked up and everything boils down to like this weird sort of sexual hate for all whores and it was just like it was he was just like insane and intense it was, I don't know, it was every, at every turn, I was like, he's fucked in the head. You let Romaro go, and the former pirate ostensibly set sail for the trade lanes of the Eastern Reach, the Edier Empire, Old Valia, and the Republics. For the remainder of your time together, Seraphin seems, if not exactly happy, at least contented with the outcome of your confrontation with his former mentor at Sayuka. When he leaves... He does so with little fanfare. Nothing but a roughly scrawled note slipped under your door. Be seeing you, Cap. 
You hear of Seraphin from time to time, in rumors and sea tales. He prowls the dead fire, a brutally efficient killer, never long for any ship and never close to any crew. This is the most, this is the saddest. This kind of makes me want to cry. After reporting back to her superiors for the Watcher's actions against the Valian Trading Company, Palagina is rewarded with reassignment home to the Valian Republics. She spends the next several years as the head of the household guard for the Duke of Ancenze. In this role, she is often lauded for her courage and loyalty. Even with all of the praise, there's still times when she cannot help but feel she could have had more influence on what transpired in the dead fire. Takehu distances himself from the problems of the dead fire, giving the tribes a reprieve from godlike omens. Ngati's silence speaks volumes. The Juana grow to rely on each other, paving a new way forward divorced from their traditions. Soon after his departure from Nekataka, Sailors report of mountainous water sculptures rising from the open sea, entrancing and salacious. These works are celebrated everywhere, from the brothel to the palace, though the identity of the artist remains an open question. Is it an open question? Is it really? That's obviously Takehu. Um, I'm also glad Palagina had like a decent ending, so because I did kind of fuck her, fuck up her ending from the first game. Um, she, I, I didn't, she didn't really have any story in this. She was just like, I'm here because I'm told to be. I'm here because I'm told to be. Watcher. I don't like you very much because of what happened, but you know, like all that stuff. But I'm glad she got a uh, decent ending. He's got a decent ending as well. He bids you farewell, suggesting that you seek your next adventure in a brothel or tavern where consequences begin and end at the front door. He sounds eager to leave old conflicts in the past. I guess the grandeur was a bit too much for him, so he just wants to, like, chill and make cool water sculptures. Your pursuit of Aethys and your journey to Ukaizo signal the end of forces that have shaped the lives of Kith and the course of nations. The cycle of reincarnation has been broken. The storms of Andra's mortar have calmed. Yet each ending promises a new beginning. As the sun rises over Ukaizo, Kith turn their gaze eastward, wondering at what lies beyond, and at the world they will fashion for themselves. Yay! As the Watcher of Kadnua and the former Herald of Bereth, you return to your ship and begin the long journey home. You hope for calm weather. The long journey home to my broken castle. Let her decipher herself and just shrugged. In retrospect, I should have just shrugged because it probably would have turned out better for her. I tried to give her what I thought was good advice and it turned out to not be. I still think, I want to say, I still like, I gave like legitimate advice and it just didn't work out for her. So, like, I don't know. I'm, like, half-dabbing out of nowhere. Eh. Eh. Um. Alright, I enjoyed this. This was good. Um, I definitely hit my saturation point, like I did with the first one, where it's like, I got, like, most of the way through, and then I was like... I'm feeling done with this, and although I did enjoy the last two nights, like finishing the story, I have no desire whatsoever to like do the DLCs. Uh, I remember when I saw that I had them, I was like, I'm probably not gonna get around to doing these, like at all. Um, maybe it'll be something I decide to return to like a year later, just like play offline for a bit. Like I have that option. Um, I'm really happy with how the level scaling worked out this time, because, like, when I did that fight the first time, 
I imagine uh, like Maya and all the Royal Dead Park Company, they were level scaled to be level 20 and they utterly destroyed me. And also gave me, gave me the decision that like, I guess like my gear and everything, like I would have to respec and all this stuff to like really level scale to level 20 and still be like good in fights. Cause I felt like, so like the ability to turn that off and just be like, no, it's good. They did it well this time. Allowing me to just like turn it on and off as at will. Like when I wanted to have like easier fights, I could. And when I wanted harder fights, I could. Um. Because I feel like nothing is more frustrating in a game like this than being utterly stuck in a combat you just can't win. But you feel like you just can't win. You have to like try doing it over and over and over and over and over. Like if I was stuck in the level scaling and I had to try doing that Royal Deadfire Company fight, which was dumb. That was, that was the, I think that was the one and only like thanks I hate it moment uh, in this game. Uh, which is unfortunate happened right at the end, so it leaves a bit of a sour taste, but everything else is good. But if I, if I had gotten stuck there for like an hour or two, like we, 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 like maybe we're still in that fight and we haven't even gotten to talking to Aethys yet, I would be so fucking mad and salty, I probably would have just rage quit and end of the story and been like, fuck it, I'm not playing this game ever again. Fuck the ending. <laughs> like, if I didn't have the ability to turn it off. Uh, I remember my solution in the first game was to turn the difficulty to easy instead. And even then, it was still fucking, it, some of it was still fucking impossible. Um, the main story wasn't. It was more of the si some of the side stuff, like some some harder boss fights. Because I remember looking at the stats, and it was like they have 150 deflection, and like 140 fortitude, like 140 plus everything, and they're immune to a bunch of shit. And they have like 30. This was like a dragon, I think, and it was like they have like 30 damage reduction. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Like I can't hit them. I can't hit them with spells. I can't debuff them. Uh. Even when I buff myself, we still can't hurt them because of their damage. It was just like, what? Are you? <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all dying in like 20 seconds. I was just like, this is dumb. I'm done. So if I, I'm glad that didn't happen in this game. I had the ability to like shift it around and choose my own difficulty whenever I, whenever I felt like it. So yeah. It was fun playing another real-time with pause game. I do enjoy these from time to time. Uh, it can be a really jank and difficult combat system to do, but I do enjoy, especially once you understand. And when understand, because I remember not understanding recovery at the beginning, and I was like, "Why are you doing nothing? What's going on?" I was getting so mad because my nothing drives me more insane in games when I don't understand why. Uh, the things that I'm controlling are not doing anything. Like, I'll tell them to do a thing and they just stand there. That was my biggest issue with Total War. Like, the only Total War I've ever played was Shogun 2, which apparently is one of the best ones. And I was, and like, I remember spending times being like, okay, archers, you're engaged with no one. Like, you were just shooting somebody, but I told you to stop. You did stop shooting. And I can see cavalry coming at them. I'm like, okay. Try to uh, maybe try to move because like they were like kind of off to the side of some pikemen. I was like, the pikemen are like stuck, engaged. I was like, they can't like leave who they're engaged with. But maybe I can like move to like hope that the cavalry kind of gets stuck on the on the pikemen. They didn't move. They uh, they weren't shooting. They refused to move. I was like, okay, just go this way. And they just like stand there, completely motionless. I was like, I was like, okay, fine. You're gonna get hit. This is annoying, but you're gonna get hit. So switch to skirmish mode so you don't get completely destroyed. They were they didn't. They just stood there and then they got trampled and then just like the unit died. And I was just like And there were so many times where I'm like, okay, just go here. I'll just tell tell the unit just go here. And they wouldn't go. And I was like And it's not like I have to wait for them to like turn and then move. I would just like I'll click it. And I'll have it on like times four speed at this point. I'll be like, okay, go. go. And they're like, uh, uh. Uh, uh, I'm like, go! Go! And then, when they would go, I would say, okay, run. Like, r like charge forward, and they wouldn't. They would just walk slowly. I was just like... I, I, I hate this so much, I'm done. Fuck Total War. 
And then I did, and then I did research. Apparently, Shogun 2 was one of the better ones. I was like, how is this one of the better Total Wars? How do people love this franchise? It's shit. Um. Although I will say, um, Total War Warhammer does look really good. I'd probably enjoy that, but um, and it does like when I watch when I watch it on stream, it's like people are controlling it just fine. Like they do the things you tell them to do. Um. But yeah, that got me a bit in this game at the beginning with the recovery, because it was like... There's no real indication that they're in recovery. They're just recovering, and so they do nothing. I kind of wish there was some sort of UI element that's like, in recovery. So I could at least know. Like, communicate that a little better, because it's like, when you tell a unit to do something, and they don't do it, and then they do it like four seconds later, you're like, what the fuck? Your immediate response is... This is this is garbage. Why is it not working? When it's working as intended, you just don't realize. Um, that's the only bit of feedback I would give. I don't know if that was like a. No, I don't think that's in it. I don't think it's an expert mode thing. Um, like otherwise, uh, in their action circle thingy. Yeah, like you just needed like a symbol. Like a stat, you could do it like a status effect symbol, or like have like a little glow around their portrait to be like, like it didn't have to be like intrusive or anything. It could have been anything, any small thing, just to be like you're in recovery. And like yeah, you would see it all the time, but then you maybe I don't know have the option to turn it off as well, or like just do something. Maybe they did do something. It was really subtle. I didn't notice. I don't know. Was that in the first? You have a little bar above them. It, you know, it may actually be an option for all I know. I can't access it in, in expert mode. I actually started a new game in this to like see non-expert mode, and I hate it. Because <laughs> it was like the default is like life bars above everything's heads, and all this stuff, and all, and they, they give you like every possible inch of information. I was just like, like I want one or two of these things, and that's it. But everything else, I was like, this kind of ruins it. It kind of, it's like a little too much. Um, yeah, you, yeah. When you're not an expert, you can turn all, turn on and off everything. I do kind of regret expert mode, which I blame you for, after because you were like, do it, do it. Because um, there was just like one or two things I would have appreciated. Um, I learned to live without the AoE markers for spells, but it also meant, like, spell shaping was nearly impossible. Which is why I never bothered, and, like, I like I could tell right at the end of the game, spell shaping is actually incredibly useful. Like, it's, in, it's an incredible feat. I feel like your main caster should always have it. But, like, when you can't even... You can't even tell which way you're doing it. You have to, like, remember which zoom it is. And then I was just like... It's just like... You kind of lock yourself out of a really useful, like, feat. So... Uh, like, you can, but it's really awkward, and I had to do a bunch of tests to, like, figure out which which way I scroll the wheel. And I don't even know how many steps there are, I'm assuming two? So you ultimately have five, like, levels of, like, spell shaping, like, the, 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 you have the, they have, like, the default. And then smaller, smaller, but stronger, bigger, bigger, but weaker. That's what I'm assuming? For all I know, it was only three instead of five. I just like I, I have no clue. Like I have absolutely no clue because I didn't have I couldn't turn AOE markers on. And I did want to have the relative defenses thing. So like when I enter a fight, because I just like I w I could be able to see um their deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. Just be able to see that. It would have been a lot easier in the beginning of the game because I did get pretty salty because it's like I literally like at the beginning of the game I was too weak to like encounter most things. And it would have been a lot easier if I could just see at a glance with the numbers being like, Oh, I'm out-leveled here, I should leave and come back later. But instead, I have to spend a bunch of time, like, scrolling through the combat log and, like, waiting for the tooltips to, like, see the rolls, and it's just like... All it, like, all, all that one did was, like, it, it creates more immersion, but, like, it took away a huge quality of life. So... Those are the only two things I would, like, really want. Everything else... I'm totally down for, like, expert mode version. Like, not knowing which dialogue choices you are locked out, because you don't have the skills or whatever. 
totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with like being in a situation being like, well, I have nothing good to say. So, I assume there are there are ways to say good things, but I can't do it. So let's just leave. Um, yo, one Audra tier backer, Robbie Jones. I don't know how much money that is. It's probably a shit ton, <laughs> like several hundred dollars. Um. Yeah, what time is it? Nine? Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to decide. My microphone is still like... I don't know. I need to get a compressor. Like an outboard one. That's expensive, but I do want one. Um. But yeah, and then... Okay, so in the future... This, we'll start tomorrow, a new game. It's gonna be weird to like start a new game and then not play it for five days. <laughs> I may just end up streaming Wednesday. Um, or Saturday or something. Depending on how I feel. Uh, yeah. I'm basically going to flip a coin between Vesperia. I've decided it's going to be Tales of Vesperia. Or is it Vesperia? I think it is. Or World of Final Fantasy. I want to play something a lot more structured. So JRPG. Uh, a lot more structured and really cheery. And not necessarily have to make me think too hard. <laughs> Aside from combat and like min-maxing my combat. Um... I don't want to have to think about ethics and morals and and all that stuff. I need a break from that. I think we all need a break from that. At least once in a while. Because the last few weeks, especially this last weekend, it's just an airing of grievances. And like, while everything's important... I think the human psyche can only handle so much before you just get, like, get exhausted. And when you get exhausted, that's when you get jaded and complacent. And that's the opposite of what you want. So. Hence why we need escapes. You know, temporary distractions. That's how I deal with grief, so... That kind of works out. But yeah. Beast of Winter, Seeker, Slayer, Survivor, and the Forgotten Sanctum. Oh, completely ignored. They just ravaged the dead fire and mystery because I didn't even interact with them. That tentacle eye thing was really cool looking. That I like. I kind of wish I did that one. I don't know which one that one is. Uh, that was probably Forgotten Sanctum. Seems most likely. Seeker Slayer Survivor sounded like that Arena Island. Beast of Winter was probably that cool dragon thing. And then Forgotten Sanctum is probably um, the weird giant tentacle thing. Hand-eye tentacle thing. Um, but yeah. I ended the game before I got too jaded from it. But I am fully saturated on this game, so I am not going to play it for a while. Also, if, like, max level's 20 and I'm not going to get any stronger, I kind of, like, don't... What am I getting stronger? Given how much content is in the game and how easy it was to get to level 20 before the end of the game... Like, there was plenty more quests I could have done. Plenty of bounties I could have done that I never did. There's the DLCs. I didn't touch any of them. I still got the level 20 pretty easily. So. I would have assumed you could go higher. I think in the first game you could go higher. I think the main game you could go to 20. But then with like the White March DLCs you could go up to like 25 or something. I would have assumed they did the same thing here. But I guess they just added more stuff. I'd like to be able to get stronger. Aside from just enchanting my equipment and getting them Parados. 
But yeah. Tis the end. Pillars of Eternity 2.